Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another podcast. This is me here, Vorton Fett. And me, Augusta Stars Battlefront. And we're going to be talking about uh, the main issues that are going on right now, currently, with Battlefront 2. So one of the first things that we wanted to kind of hit is the whole loot crate system that Battlefront 2 had at launch. And kind of our thoughts on the pay-to-win system that Battlefront had at the initial launch period for Battlefront 2. And Gustav, what were your your kind of your thoughts when you first saw the loot crate system in Battlefront 2? Yeah, I knew straight from uh, the start that it, it, it was going to be like pay to win. And EA said it will it will not be pay to win at every press conference and at uh, uh, E3 and EA, EA Play. Um, and I, I just knew from the beginning that it, it was going to be pay to win. Uh, I would hope that it was only cosmetics, but uh, I knew that it will, it will be weapon, star cards, uh, but I didn't know it was going to be uh, so damn connected to the progression system. Yeah, I agree as well. Uh, it Definitely, we didn't think it was going to impact the gameplay as much as it actually did at the initial launch. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of people are saying it wasn't you know, that big of a, a boost, those star cards were not that big of an issue. Um, but once we actually got hold of the actual a launch system, we realized how how horrible it actually was, and how much of a pay to win it uh, it definitely was at launch. Yeah, like it's it's not it's not that big a boost for the troopers. It's much more for the heroes. But it doesn't matter. It should it should be no boost at all. For me as a player, I want I want to earn weapons, star cards, and everything by playing, ranking up. Like in the old game, it's much better like that. Right. So. Yeah. That that is a pretty pretty crazy system, right? That you can actually rank up for uh, actually playing the game and not having to yeah. spend money, right? <laughs> I think EA yeah. would have uh, gone with the you know original system that has worked in pretty much every game that we've ever played. Yeah, and like the only way to progress your class is to buy loot crates and randomly get better cards and randomly upgrade your level. Right, yeah, the That's, progression, yeah. the progression system's definitely uh, based around those loot crates. You, I mean, you can't even level up your classes without star cards, and the best way to obtain star cards is the the whole loot crate system. Yeah, and you can see your reward to the next level is uh, an emote. What the fuck is that? An emote? <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. And then also, um, after the big controversy. Uh, over the loot crate system after like the trial version uh, people started mass uh, refunding the game and then EA later uh, responded with a comment basically restating why the loot crates were were, were the, the way they were and also the progression system of why they were and basically stating they want a sense of accomplishment and that's why it was uh, basically so grindy for the progression system which then later became you know, the most downvoted comment in Reddit <laughs> history. Pretty insane. And then later, uh, you know, led to the removal of the microtransactions. Uh, do you think those microtransactions are going to come back? And if you do, do you think it's going to be any better than what we saw at launch? Uh, first of all, a sense of accomplishment. <laughs> that's, that's really funny. <laughs> uh, 60,000 uh, credits for one hero. There was one guy on Reddit who counted it. You have to play like... 10,000 hours or something to get all the the heroes yeah. and um, they can't bring the loot crates, loot crates back I don't think they can because it's such a big backlash right now that they can't they can't bring them back back with uh, with the pay to win progression system people will not play the game anymore new people will not come in so it's going to be a really really big problem for them for EA and DICE right yeah I definitely don't think it would be a good decision for them to bring that loot crate system back. Uh, but I'm kind of curious what strategy they're they're going to use because cosmetic would be very difficult uh, because everything does have to be approved through Lucasfilm. So are they gonna they're gonna have to essentially rework the whole progression system and the, the loot crate system in the game? And so that would be a huge update. Kind of curious yeah. what what actually system they're going to end up rolling out if they go away from the microtransactions completely. Yeah, they they have to do cosmetics. That's their their only choice. They can't bring back guns and star cards 
into the loot crates randomly. They need to be earned by playing the game. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I completely agree. At this point, if they bring the loot crates back and still had a similar uh, pay-to-win style microtransaction system, uh, I, I definitely feel like this game would be completely dead within six months. Yeah, yeah, I feel so too because there's so much people who complain right now about the game. I saw Frankie Dulo just today upload a video. He compared Battlefront uh, 2015 to this Battlefront, and uh, his conclusion was that the last game was better. Yeah, he yeah. He, com- he compared all the, all the, all the stages like graphics, gameplay, um, FPS, all that stuff, and he just the last Battlefront was better in his opinion. And I've heard right. many other YouTubers say the same thing. So it's it's a really big problem right now. Yeah, I never I never thought I would be saying. 2015 was better because that had <laughs> you know that had it, it, its issues uh, yeah. but I, I actually I could actually agree with that statement just because of the 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 big issues that this game is uh has basically had recently I mean gameplay wise this game if it ran smoothly this gameplay would be this game would be beautiful and I would it'd be one of the best you know battlefront games I've ever played but all the progression systems um, stuttering lag, and mainly the loot crates. It's really yeah. This game could be so much better if if everything was perfect. No game is perfect, but if you look at the last game and this game, it could be so much better with all the upgraded graphics, uh, new guns, uh, a lot more heroes, three eras, uh, prequel, original, sequel. It could be so much better. It could beat all the originals, Battlefront. Yeah, this this is definitely this, a uh, game that uh, I hope you know. I hope in a in six months, it's you know the the battlefront we always wanted, uh, but yeah. I definitely fear with the way EA started off with this game that it's not it's not going to ever be the battlefront that we all deserve and want. Yeah, I also hope it's going to be the best battlefront game ever, but I don't know if the backlash is too big or they can fix it. We ha- we will have to see. We'll have to see. Right, and since we were on the topic of loot crates, do you think that loot crates? in the in the form that it was in do you think that's a kind of a form of gambling because there's a few uh companies out there that are saying it's not gambling because you always <laughs> are you know you always earn something no matter what uh do you think it is kind of a form of gambling and can uh basically you know hurt our youth especially because it is a legal form of gambling for for our children I wouldn't say I wouldn't say it's straight up gambling. It's a it's a sort of gambling because you you get random things and you put money in. You want the best things. Um, so f- for for kids, it's not good at all. Yeah, I definitely yeah. think it could uh, definitely impact the youth more than anything because it does teach our youth. Um, basically, you know, yeah, you always do get something, but it can definitely teach your youth. Um, gambling habits i would say yeah. if you don't get the the star card you were wanting oh uh, you know i'll just i'll just spend another dollar uh try to get that star card and you know that exactly obviously that can yeah. that can build up to you know a couple hundred dollars very very quickly yeah and that that's a big problem kids are taking their parents credit cards and <laughs> yeah uh, putting micro trash in non-stop that would be a big failure for the game yeah me being a parent i could definitely see um you know the kid taking your credit card and running it up a couple hundred dollars and yeah <laughs> that, that's not good that's definitely i i only get trash yeah and the and yeah. the stuff you get in the loot crates are uh at least from what i've seen are not that good anyways you don't seem no. to ever really get anything any good drops out of them i think i opened like five crates today i got maybe one uncommon card yeah yeah i i've never I know epics are supposedly you can't earn via uh, cards yeah, I know. anymore, Epic card, yeah, I know. but I think legendaries you can, and I don't think I I think I've gotten one common, and everything else is just or one blue, whatever the blue is called now. No, oh, there is no legendaries. Epic is the highest. Okay, epic is the highest. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I know the colors, but not the not the names. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And EA though, with with all this controversy, right before they pulled the actual loot crates from the game, and I think this was the big reason they pulled it, is supposedly, and um, if I can find the source, I'll link it in the description, but um, supposedly Disney called up uh, EA's CEO to uh, basically figure out what what they're doing with their the Star Wars IP 
because of all this big backlash and essentially could hurt sales for their uh, movie that's coming out very shortly. Do you have any thoughts on the possibility of EA losing the Star Wars license from Disney? Yeah, I think it's possible. I don't want EA to handle Battlefront series. Uh, I would hope that DICE can be their own uh, without EA and create a game alone. Right. Because I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think DICE uh, would have won the, the loot crate system from the beginning. Yeah, I definitely don't think DICE is the the issue here. I definitely believe it is EA and their, you know, uh, very greedy behavior lately with yeah. their games. I mean, there's every single game is monetized with microtransactions that they put out, um, especially especially their sports games like FIFA. I think FIFA is the one that really started the microtransactions, at least for EA's, yeah. EA's side of it. Yeah, I've played it as well. Ultimate Team in FIFA, it's... It's uh, a lot of microtransactions. Yeah, I think there was a stat. I'm not 100% sure exactly the numbers on it, but EA's revenue, I think it was like 60 to 70% of their revenue um, all came from microtransactions, and I think that's why they started really pushing the whole microtransactions in all of their games. But uh, I guess to get away, since we, we kind of hammered down the, the loot crates to get away, um, let's look at some of the other issues that we're seeing in Battlefront, a lot of um, stuttering, lag, you know, glitches. Um, yeah. This just, just seems like it's just a lot of bugs currently right now in the Battlefront game. Have you noticed a lot of stuttering, lag? Have you ran into any kind of like glitches? <clears throat> yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, <laughs> like in the last game, it was no problem. Everything run, runs smoothly. But this game, in this game, it's stuttering like every time you play every time sometimes you're small but uh sometimes it's really much it's really annoying i don't know i don't know about you with pc but uh, uh on consoles it's really bad right yeah and just for uh viewer the viewers out there he is playing on the ps4 and i do play on the pc so we kind of have both sides of things the console side and also the pc side but i i, I know on the pc firsthand it has been it's sometimes almost unplayable. The other night yeah. actually was horrible. Um, and it, it does lag every single time you start a game. I've never started a multiplayer match where I didn't get mass stuttering for at least two minutes. And sometimes you even have maps like uh, the other day. I couldn't even play Kashyyyk. I had to eventually just leave the game because apparently everybody was having uh, issues with Kashyyyk, which was really weird. But uh, the servers are just atrocious right now and it doesn't seem yeah. like we're hearing from uh, dice or ea plans on fixing it it's almost just like they're just not doing anything with the game they're not communicating hey. anything yeah, it seems like that they never say anything on twitter and uh, i haven't seen like none of the game changers say anything in their video like elliot's battlefront updates he hasn't made one video about the, the stuttering and the lag yeah it definitely is really disappointing that yeah. we're not we're not hearing anything from the, the especially the game changers. At least you would hear, yeah. you know, their concerns about the game. If anything, they're still extremely positive with the game and you don't ever hear anything negative about Battlefront, but th there's, you know, a lot a lot of negative about this game right now and they yeah. should be the the big ones, you know, actually saying stuff because Dice actually hears them. You know, they they don't hear smaller YouTubers like us. Exactly, they are the voice of the community, and they need to be, they need to take responsibility for the community and tell e, uh, Dice and EA uh, about that sort of things. Who destroys the gameplay for everyone? Yeah, yeah, they're definitely the unfortunately right now the voice <laughs> of the community because they're not they're definitely not a a good voice for us right now. They're not stating the big issues on it. I know, like a lot of the, a lot of the glitches that I've seen, at least on the PC. I don't know if you've ever had this issue, but it's almost like a a, a matrix mode, and you go yeah, into like, yeah. this, this slow mo, and it's it's very weird, but it's it happens actually extremely often, and a lot of yeah, I felt it too. Yeah, I think Kashyyyk is the map. Like every time we play Kashyyyk, that's the worst stuttering of them all. It happens right. all the time. I also seen I've seen a lot of videos. I think you actually have a couple of videos of, especially with heroes falling, you know, below the map. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that that seems to happen actually quite often with people falling below the map and 
There's a lot of other weird glitches. People getting stuck. Uh, Taking it areas. Yeah. Uh, I think the other day I saw somebody that was just uh, stuck in place. And he, he, yeah. was, he was as a Han Solo and he was just stuck in place and he couldn't move until another hero came up and hit him out of his little yeah. hole that he was stuck in. <laughs> but yeah, it, that's it, also one thing that they should have uh, they should have put in the, the vault system to this game because you can be stuck on like everywhere on the maps. Yeah, I think a vault system would have definitely uh, helped out this game a lot with a lot of the glitches. Which I don't quite understand why they didn't add a vault system because I mean it's it's in their battlefield games it would it shouldn't be that hard to carry that over since it's the My same exception. the same engine they should be able to carry that vault system over. And uh, I I was playing on uh, Mos Eisley yesterday, <laughs> the whole ground disappeared, a glitch. Oh yeah, <laughs> I could yeah. see it down into the ground. It was there was nothing. It was pretty funny. I mean, you know, the, obviously this is a really common thing and a lot, a lot of people are seeing it and it, it goes the same with the, you know, the stuttering issues. We're just not hearing anything from EA or DICE on plans of fixing it. Like you, even just, a, you know, a tweet saying, hey guys, we're aware of this issue and we're working on it would, would be good enough for me. But right now I haven't heard anything, not even a peep out of them about the issues with this. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know how they... How are they gonna fix it? I know that you are good with PCs and computers, so maybe you know stuff about FPS and stuff like that. I don't know uh, how much FPS you you can have on a PS4 when you play to right. run it smoothly. Well, it should um, shooters should run you know at a solid 60 frames per second, and it shouldn't drop yeah. below that. You know, I have a really high end PC, and yeah. I I've set the game completely on the lowest settings possible to see if that is fix the stuttering issue. And my mm. FPS issue, and it, it still, you know, it 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 helps out a little bit, but it's still, I get mass stutterings, especially when I'm uh, streaming, mm. which is pretty disappointing that, you know, my high end PC can't run this game on low settings, which tells me it's just poor optimization on their part. Yeah, so it's all about optimization, right? Yeah, yeah, they definitely. It doesn't seem very. At least on the PC side, because I haven't played this on the console, so I don't, I can't really speak for that. But it's definitely very poorly optimized for the PC. Uh, I don't know. I think the game changer must say something uh, on their channels. They must make videos about it and make EA and I's concerned about it. Right. Yeah, I definitely believe the game changers need to be talking about this. Very, very surprised and and disappointed that we're that we're not hearing. Uh, word out of them about the issues with this game. Yeah, it's pretty sad actually. Yeah, which you know, especially like Battlefront updates. I mean, his his whole channel is based off of Battlefront. I mean, it says it right yeah. in the name. So if yeah. this game fails, you know, his channel he fails. fails. Yeah. And if these issues don't get fixed soon, this game is going to fail. And you, so you think he would be the one that would be outraged about this more than anybody because this is his livelihood. Yeah. So. Yeah, we have to see what happens. Uh, I hope they make videos about it. And yeah, hopefully, maybe, uh, maybe, maybe they'll get word of this video. Maybe they'll start talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's hope so, man. All right, guys. So we've come to the uh, community podcast questions. These are all coming uh, mostly from uh, Gustav's Discord. You guys asked a lot of good questions on here, so we're gonna uh, read off some of the questions here and try to answer as many as possible. Yeah. So first up, we have some question from. My man, Solo Boy. Uh, okay, Vorton, are you ready? I'm ready. Rebels or the Clone Wars? <laughs> I get this all the time. Um, I've only seen a little bit of Rebels. Not the not the biggest fan. Definitely don't dislike it, but I would have to say Clone Wars. It seems a, a little more grown up. Yeah, I agree. I also like Clone Wars more. I've seen like every Rebels episode, but that's only because I'm a Star Wars nerd and I will hate yeah. myself if, if I don't do it. Yeah, I definitely the Clone plan. Wars was more adult think yeah definitely plan on watching the rebels i just i'm kind of waiting to binge watch them all when i have a chance and next question is best star wars movie <laughs> that's a it's a pretty easy one hands down episode five mm. for me yep empire strikes back for me as well yeah it's a it's a definitely a great one now next one worst star wars movie uh this is probably most people's answer to it but uh, episode one phantom menace okay i don't i disagree i have the the clones Attack of the Clones. Yeah. Oh, episode, really? Yeah, I think it was too cringy with Anakin and uh, 
and Padme. Yeah, you, <laughs> you, didn't like, you didn't like the the whole love story? <laughs> no, no, no. It was so cringy. Yeah, yeah, it was a bit cringy. I'm not going <clears> to lie on that. So next question from Solo Boy. Best opening scene in a Star Wars movie? Hmm. Uh, best opening scene, I would say, probably would be episode four um, with Vader <gasps> and everything. Oh, I thought you were going to say... Um... I'm a bit disappointed, <laughs> Borton. I thought you were going to say episode three, the opening scene with Anakin and the space battle. That was awesome. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's my favorite. That that was a good one. That was definitely. Yeah. I just like, uh, I mean, episode four, you know, that's what really started Star Wars. And yeah, was, of course. It's really cool. With started, started off with a bang and just yeah. a good classic, you know. Yeah. I have it as number two spot, so it's pretty good. And the next one, also from Solo Boy, best space battle in the movies. Uh Probably like you said, like the opening uh, fight scene, episode three. Yeah, you think that's the best? It's, it's definitely one. Of, it's definitely up there with the best. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't. <clears throat> it's it's a really good uh, space scene, but I wouldn't say it's a space battle. If you compare it to uh, Return of the Jedi, space battle was a bit longer, a yeah. bit more fleshed out. So I think that I have that one in my number one spot. And next question, the last question from Solo Boy: best lightsaber duel in the movies. Um, one of my favorite lightsaber duels was definitely uh, with Darth Maul Obi Wan and uh, Qui Gon Jinn. Is that the best one? I, I, in my opinion, I would say that would be at at my top of my list. Even though that movie was kind of kind of poor, but that was that was one of my favorite scenes. Yeah, I like it also. I like the Anakin Obi Wan from Episode Three. I think that's the best one. It's it's too much choreographed, but otherwise the characters the uh, it's so fleshed out. The, the ending is pretty good. I really love that that lightsaber duel with those two. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's def- fi- and it it's finished. It's finished the series uh, pretty well, also. Yeah, I definitely. I definitely liked that, and that was probably my number two. Uh, I just felt like it was slightly drawn out. I guess you would say, but it was definitely yeah. a good one. I did enjoy it. Yeah. Okay, that's all about questions. Now we'll have some questions from Crafts Lol. Why did you become such a big Star Wars fan? Uh, is it because you grew up with it, or do you have a certain impact on your life? Um, well, honestly, I just uh, I kind of grew up with Star Wars. My dad uh, was a huge Star Wars fan from when he was a kid. I mean, he you know started off with Episode Four, watched it when he was younger, and kind of just raised me as a Star Wars fan. So I can't really remember a time where I didn't like Star Wars in my life. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's the same question, for, uh, same answer for everyone. Because this is a generation thing with Star Wars. My dad also loves Star Wars. And uh, he took me to comic book shops. And we bought some figures. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so all the movies. So he was a big imp- impact on me as well. Yeah. yeah. I always remember yeah. uh, going to the midnight release for episode 1, 2, and 3 with my dad. Oh, yeah. Getting, yeah. Out, of, getting out of school <clears throat> the next day so I can go see Star Wars. <laughs> yeah. I also saw it in the midnight release. Yeah. Next question from Crafts Lol. What's your favorite kind of Star Wars merch? Um, I would probably say like uh, the lightsabers. Honestly, you know, like the FX lightsabers and things like yeah, that. Yeah, same here, same here. I don't have any, but I want to buy a a really good FX lightsaber. Uh, yeah, I have a I have a hand, expensive. I have a handmade lightsaber that would cost me like almost over three hundred dollars. Oh, you have? Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> you need to show that on the stream sometime. Oh yeah, definitely will. Next question from Crabs Lol. How often do you think about Star Wars? Uh well, since uh, you know, obviously my Star Wars, or my channel and is based around Star Wars, I would say probably every day, multiple times a day. Yeah. Yeah, same here. I also started my channel, so since then it became nearly every day. But uh it have a huge impact on my life, so almost every time. Yeah, it definitely had a big yeah. impact on mine as well. And we have next the last question from Crafts Lol. If you could make the next trilogy, what would it be about? Hmm. I know what you're gonna say, Vort. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is it about oh, I'd like you know Vort and Fett? Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> uh, probably the Old Republic, honestly. Um, yeah. About Revan, I think that would be really cool to go more in depth and actually have a, <clears throat> a movie about Revan. I agree. I, I'm not a huge fan uh, as you with the Old Republic. I want to learn everything, but. I haven't played a game, so I don't know as much as you. I only know about the the Sith Lords, Revan, Malgus, uh, Bane, and stuff like that. But I also want an Old Republic trilogy. Yeah, I think it would be pretty cool to have like a kind of a, a, the storyline of the rise of like um, Darth 
Darth Plagueis, which was yeah. Darth Sidious's master originally. So t- to have like, you know, an actual storyline based around Darth Plagueis, I think would be pretty awesome as well. Yeah, I agree. But maybe that can be a nice uh, TV show. Yeah, I've heard rumors about them possibly doing a Old Republic TV show. Yeah. So that would be that would be pretty awesome. Yeah, next up we have uh, actually one more question from Crab's Law. It's pretty funny. If you could choose one Star Wars planet to be your holiday destination, which planet would it be? Uh, I would say I would say Naboo. Looks like a Ooh. pretty nice place to take a vacation. Go and see the dunga- uh, the Gungans with your kids. Oh, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I would say uh, Mustafa. No, I was kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, scary. It seems pretty nice to uh, have a nice swim. Yeah, that definitely looks like a nice, like a like a beach planet. Yeah, except that it's a uh, imperial base, but I can live with that. That's all right. Imperials aren't that yeah. bad. No. <laughs> <clears throat> and the next question we have from uh, Levy, which is your favorite porn star? <laughs> I don't know if I have a favorite. Yeah. This is a Christian podcast, Levy. This is a Christian. Jeez. Jeez, yeah. Levy. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see here. Next question is from um, Blaze, uh, Star Wars Battlefront. What spin-off movie do you want to be the next? Um, well, we, I mean, we already have some confirmed. I guess I'd say ones that are not confirmed. Yeah, I would like to see like a, uh, like a Boba Fett spin-off. I think that would be pretty cool. Like having him as a, a younger child. Um, maybe, okay. maybe like maybe like a teenager have a spinoff of Boba Fett, like a Bounty Hunter movie, like they talked about. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm. yeah. <clears throat> I let's go back to your what you said before. My favorite my favorite spinoff movie would be with uh, with Plagueis and Palpatine. Uh, yeah, you can have like maybe a, some Dar- maybe some Darth Maul in there too because he was in that time time period. Yeah, actually, uh, awesome. Darth Maul um, in the Plagueis book was uh, was given at a, uh, at at a at a young age to Palpatine to train. So yeah, that would be pretty interesting. What's the worst villain from the Star Wars film so far? I would say like right now, I would say honestly, Kylo Ren. He, uh, yeah. <laughs> he just seems kind of like a, uh, immature little brat. That's very underpowered. At least, I mean, all we've seen right now, you know, is a little bit of them. So maybe <clears> he <throat> changed my mind in the last Jedi, but it, as far as the force awakens, I would say he's probably like one of the worst villains I've seen. <clears throat> yeah, I don't see him as a villain. So, uh, but I agree. Uh, but I, I think he will disappoint you in the, the last Jedi. But we can talk <laughs> about that in the next podcast. Um, but I, I think uh, actually, Krennic. I think he's not that fleshed out. I don't like him that much. Uh, yeah, like like other people do. Yeah, I can agree. He was with pretty that. lame. Yeah, he was a uh, pretty, pretty lame. He was all about yeah. his ego, and that's all he really cared about. Yeah, when when Tarkin said this is my uh, operation now, he should have shot him in the face, yeah. like a real empire. <laughs> <laughs> I agree completely. Yeah, and we have a question from Big Mitchum. Uh, talk about the possibility of Finn being a relative of Mace Windu. <laughs> um, I honestly think I think that's that's complete rubbish. <laughs> yeah, it's I, silly. I, yeah, I mean, would I like that? Um, honestly, no. I don't know. I don't. I don't think that would have any relevance to the story. So I don't think he is. Um, hopefully not, at least. It would make the universe a bit smaller as well. Yeah, I think uh, everybody's hoping that certain characters are just related to characters they already know. And honestly, I, I kind of want Star Wars to go away from some of the old characters and you yeah. know, make make themselves their own. Yeah, but they also have need to have some... Uh, I don't like like when if they're going to take away the Jedi and the Sith. I don't like that. I want that to be a part of Star Wars. Yeah, I think that's something here. that needs to always stay is have Jedi and Sith. Yeah. And now we don't have Sith anymore that we know of, so... Right, yeah, unfortunately, see. supposedly the two villains are not Sith. Now we have some questions from Crafts Lol again. <laughs> uh, which hero which hero would you like to see in Battlefront 2? And he says, no Jar Jar. <laughs> Explanation no. marks. Yeah. I was going to say Jar Jar. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say... Like uh, I would like to see Mace Windu, honestly. He hasn't been confirmed as far as my knowledge. Yeah. And I think he would be a really cool character to to play as in Battlefront 2. <clears throat> yeah. I would rather have Anakin and Obi-Wan before that. But uh, Mace, I love Mace Windu, so I want to see him as well. Yeah, I just feel like Anakin and Obi-Wan are almost 
they have to have them. So I, I believe they'll be in the game no matter what. But like as far as okay, ones that are, okay, I mean like that, yeah. Okay, now we have another question from Crabs Lol. Is the Fett family your favorite Star Wars family because of your mm. name? Of course. <laughs> there, there's a string of bounty hunters, Mandalorians. Like it's awesome. Okay, Poppy Ivan asks, why is Wharton such a noob? Yeah, it's just that's the, that's the way I am, man. Can't change it. Can't change a noob, right? Oh. Uh, Poppy Ivan again. What are your thoughts about the current political climate in America? No comment. No. <laughs> 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 okay. That, yeah, that was the questions. All of them. All right, guys. So this is going to conclude uh, the first podcast with myself, Fortin Fett, and Gustav. And our next podcast is go, we're going to go a little bit further into The Last Jedi and our expectations with The Last Jedi. Yeah, and guys, don't forget to like and subscribe and share this video. Uh, that would be much appreciated. And stay tuned for next week. We will talk about The Last Jedi and more. Bye. Peace.